I want to talk to you about the story of Judah and Tamar in Genesis 38. It's kind of a random story, or at least it feels like a random story. It's kind of sandwiched in between the story of Joseph. Um, in Genesis 37, we have uh, Joseph is sold into slavery by his brothers, and then Genesis 39 picks up again with that story of how Joseph, uh, you know, saves his family from a famine uh, by being, you know, raised up into the leadership of um, in, in Egypt. And Genesis 38 is just kind of like this side story. And it's a story of one of the brothers of Joseph after he sells his, his brother into slavery, runs off. And Genesis 38 just tells the story of Judah marrying a woman outside of his tribe. He was told not to do this. He uh, has a, a bunch of sons. The sons are make a bunch of terrible decisions, uh, which leads most of them to, to die. Uh, one of them marries a woman named Tamar, and uh, she is all alone after her husband uh, is, is killed. And it tells the story of Tamar trying to survive, trying to be taken care of. And in the process of it, uh, it gets real messy. And it's kind of like Game of Thrones style of like, why is this in the Bible? What is going on? And uh, Tamar uh, actually seduces her father-in-law, Judah. Judah doesn't know it's his daughter-in-law. I have no idea why. Uh, but in the process of it, she gets pregnant. And then uh, Judah finds out that his daughter-in-law is pregnant and thinks that she, you know, didn't get married and made all these mistakes and decides that she needs to be put to death. And uh, when he sees her and uh, kind of interviews her and, and this whole, you know, jury kind of process happens, finds out that he's the one that actually, uh, you know, got her pregnant. And uh, he fortunately confesses, says he's a hypocrite and actually says she's more righteous. And you kind of are like, what is going on in this story? And I, I also felt, you know, and, and I'm reminded when I read this story, how I think my family's jacked up, <laughs> but Judah and Tamar's story is way more of a mess than anything I could imagine. And um, I, I, I want you to, to lean in on this. Like God put this story in the Bible for a reason. And it's easy to kind of kind of go back and, and kind of miss it and go, okay, well, that, that was messy. But I think that there are two lies here that you and I tend to believe that this story reveals. First, this is the lie that we're not good enough for God. We think, oh, God doesn't know what I've done, what I've thought. He has no idea the mess that I've made. Um, but the reality is, is that Judah and Tamar's story is a story of one terrible decision after another that compounds into kind of a lifestyle of a mess. And they are in this very messy moment um, in Genesis 38. And I want you to know that God wants to meet you in your mess. And yes, the truth is, is that we aren't good enough for God, but because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can know God. Uh, Romans 5, 1 says, and, and I want you to believe this. I, I want you to think of Judah and Tamar and go, okay, if this is true for them, it's also true for me. Romans 5, 1 says, we are made good people and put right with God when we believe in Jesus Christ. So now we have peace with God because of what our Lord Jesus Christ did. It is through Jesus' work on the cross that no matter how messy our life is, how messy our family is, we are good enough for God. And so I want you to believe that. The second lie is that there's no way God can use us. Okay, yes, I'm part of God's family and I'm on God's team, but God has me on the bench. He's not going to put me in the game. There's no way he's going to use me. He doesn't understand, uh, you know, my Judah, Tamar, you know, uh, past. And the reality is, is that God does want to use you. He doesn't just want you to be part of his family, but he wants you to be an active member of it. You get to be a part of what God's doing on this side of eternity. And one of the things I love about this story is that Tamar is named in Jesus's lineage, in, in his genealogy in Matthew 1, that Tamar is not somebody just forgotten and put off but she is actually named in Jesus' uh, lineage. And I love this, that God wants to not just have you be part of his family, but he wants to put you in the game and he wants to name you, that you're important to him. That it's just not that you're forgiven, but you want 
that God wants to remember you and he wants to use you. God is not interested in what you have done. He's interested in what you're going to do for him. I know that's a hard truth to believe, but I want you to understand this, that if God can use Judah and Tamar, he can use you.